Welcome to Weekend Project. I'm Laura Lynn of the Mom and Pop Quilt Shop and we're very happy to see you here today. Today we're going to work on a fabric woven rug. Now I need something for my door area. I'm the one usually coming in most of the time with my boots and stuff like that and it's the mat that we have there is it's just not doing its gig and I, you know, I have fabric. Let me use it. So I'm making something. It's taking a little time and it's taking a little bit of fabric, but it's, I have it to use. So I have a bolt. Uh, while I had, it was really kind of thick all the way around and super tall. 84 inches is uh, the length of fabric that I have from uh, salvage to salvage. And what I've done is I folded it over twice upon itself and now I'm cutting it into three inch strips. I've tried to make sure all the lines uh, of the fabric are lined up the best I can. It's not, I'm not doing any wavy cuts, though I think wavy cuts would be fun too. You could do it on the, on the diagonal. All right, so we're going to make lots of these. We have to make lots of these. I think I made probably 80 or something that I'm working on for the carpet for the back door, and I'm just going to show you how I'm going to make some progress on it. So after cutting my strips to three inches wide, I'm just going to fold it like we would normally for binding, the center's upon itself, let them touch, and then just like that, and then I'm just sewing all the way down on this one edge, just creating like the little fabric rope, okay? And we're gonna just pop a few down through the machine so you can see how it goes, and then I'll, uh, we'll just start doing some weaving. And what I did is I laid out 30 strips, this the, the length of it, and then I laid some duct tape across the top to secure it to the top of my desk. And I used my one inch ruler uh, spaces in here to make sure all my strips were laying the same direction and were lined up before I started weaving. So um, there's, a, there's a good tip there, use, use duct tape. <laughs> 101 uses for duct tape. <laughs> and then some, especially in the sewing room. Okay, so let's wake up little Nomi here. Now, once we get it underneath the machine or get it under to get it sewn together, we're just going to flip those sides in and then just sew on down. I tried to keep it a quarter of an inch away from the edge and made sure the all the three the, all the four layers were together. So, I'd kind of pull it out towards me a little bit and then just fold those edges in and then kind of sew up to that. Make sure that you get tuck it in. And then so up to it. it doesn't have to be exact. You're you're just you're just having some fun with your fabric. Now this is a great way to maybe use some uh, corduroy, uh, some denim, maybe some a little bit more of a thicker material that you have that you may not like the print of. Chop it up, chop it up, make carpet out of it. Or you can make this as uh, um, hot pads. Weave a few small ones together. Make yourself a mug rug. You know, there's 110 uses for uh, making these little fabric ro woven things. You can weave it into a basket. Okay, just fold it, tuck it in. And just use your fingers to guide, your finger and your thumb. And then pull it towards you. Oop, I think I hit the microphone. Sorry about that. Pop's probably going to say I'm sewing too fast. <laughs> but you can get into quite a groove, especially if you kinda, you're kind of you cutting a bunch uh, to begin with. Like I say, about 80 strips, uh, 3 inches wide, and then, of course, I had a, a, a nice long uh, width of fabric, so 84 inches. But, you know, when you're always at this, the, the shops and you're looking at stuff and you see things that are deals and closeouts for, you know, drapery or uh, outdoor fabric or something like that, you know, maybe you should buy the whole roll. 75% off, you got yourself a unique, especially something with a, a pattern would be so cool, like a floral pattern, chopped up and then put back together in a different purpose. So... And this should soak up a bit of the um, 
uh, sloppiness from the snow and the mud and the slush and stuff, as well as be able to um, spray down, oops, spray down and um, hang to dry. So, all right. So we're just gonna do another one the same way. And I just get, I just chain uh, fed them through, folded it through on itself, those little raw edges, and then just kept on trucking. Come on, there we go. And the feed, um, sorry, the um, uh, the walking foot is fantastic for this because you're you're going through a little bit more of a tougher fabric, and you are got it stacked up on itself a few times. So. What to do? No, well, it's been a good day. Good, good, good. A little, little cold, but that's all right. So far, it's been a good week. We're making some uh, oatmeal raisin cookies. So you have to check out our other channel for that uh, recipe and show. Like I said, I want I haven't made oatmeal cookie, oatmeal raisin cookies in forever, so I'm excited. Usually it's always chocolate chip around here. And I may I may like scoop some out and then toss the rest, maybe some chocolate chips in there. So But we've been loving banana bread. It's been, it's been certainly getting munched around the house, which is good. So it's always nice when you can home bake. Sorry, back to the task at hand. <laughs> Squirrel, just sew on down, and you're just sealing up those raw edges. Like if you had something that wasn't gonna fray. And maybe it was a bit thicker. Maybe I just use those strips. Just cut it into a thinner strip and use those strips to weave. Or if you had like something that was a bit tougher and it was pinking uh, as you had cut, you could always use that as well. It's only cray a little bit. Okay, so once you get a bunch of those, as many as you think you're probably gonna need, um, you can always kind of do uh, like the, especially if you, you know the, the, you're with the fabric is you, what you have to use is only 40 inches so you're going to make like a approximately a 40 inch uh, long uh, carpet and the question is how how long you or weave it from there like a, you know you could always add or sew pieces together to to make a bigger chunk so but like I said you just easily line it up on your ruler either with your cutting mat or your ruler itself and then just cut your strips and it is a little thicker, and I've cut a lot, so I, I, I do have some new blade, uh, new blade to put in there. Okay, and then once you get your stack ready, okay, so and here's, here's the fabric, you can see it there. And of course, I've cut a bunch of strips off already. Okay. Okay. And it's, it's super durable. I've done my Christmas bag uh, for the Christmas tree out of it. I've done some bags. I've done, uh, obviously, this, this project here, okay. So I, I have a big bag, big bag of these still to still to go. Made up a bunch. Let's move this and this out of here, and I'll move my other project back over. Okay. So like I said, I duct taped the top part up here, as you can see. Right here, I'll show you under the the, big, the over the head here. You can see how there's like this little section. They were all laid together. I even tried to. Uh, section the red lines like I did a four pack and then obviously I got a little wayward in there but uh, nonetheless it, it just kind of make sure they're all laying the same way I made sure that the seam was laying in the same direction and I laid about 30 of them out thinking that was a good width of what I wanted to start with laid a couple of strips of duct tape one over this and then then from this sticking to my desk to give it secure and then from there once I got to the point where I was working past the edge of my desk, I had to scoot it up, take it off the duct tape and scoot it up. So I do need to make a long one. So I'm going to try and go as far as I can go on this project. Okay. So let's move us right here into the center so you can see what I'm going on here. 
And I just started with an over, under, under, over as I went. Tried to make sure my strips were approximately the same size, although I just used one big piece and then clipped off, a big piece and clipped off. I did kind of notice a little bit that I was coming in a little bit, like a little bit of an hourglass figure. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, but that's okay. You know, you can tweak it, wiggle it. I did find that pulling the like this, the long strips down and securing kind of everybody up into the same kind of, you know, into the same party sort of bit, it was very helpful, like to keep everything nice and secure. So you can see how you know, it just moves and you can tweak it and make it, make these little bits more square-like instead of rectangular shape. But, you know, it's going to move and it's going to shift on you, but just have some fun. Just have some fun. Make something unique. You can make it like a character, like a weird fabric, or just use a bunch of your scraps and make a whole bunch of strips like this. And just use, use all the colors of the rainbow and all the fabric that you have. Not all the fabric that you have, but, you know, all the crazy fabric. Or maybe some of the, you know, not so I don't really want to look at fabric. So create something different. Use what you got. Okay, so there's that one. I'll take another one, and same as uh, when I was laying the carpet out this way towards me, I made sure that the seam was the same, okay? That the fold it, where the fold is coming down to the other side is always, always laying out the same way. So I had the round part of the fabric up here, and then this was the seam. So, and on this line right here, I'm gonna go under, over, under, over, under, over. So really I'm only picking up the one that I need to go under, which is every other one. Hence the weave. But you could do two by two. You do two pieces and you're doing two and then up two and down two. I mean, there's so many ways to, to weave. You can Google it and you'd be mind boggled. Just, I'm just doing the basic. And then make sure you're, you're laying even all the way across. You didn't have any twists like I had there as it was going. And then you're just going to kind of shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. Scoot it on up. Make sure you give a little bit more over on this side. Okay. And then I found this very helpful. So this is going to be in step process that you're going to go along on here. Let's take a long pin and go through the one that's on the second to the last row, the strip you just did, and then a poke through the one that's at the very last. And do that for both sides. And once you get about five or six of them done, bring it under your, under your sewing machine and then stitch down the side then the side, and then I was doing one down the center because it, it was a little bit wide. So if you do something, maybe a narrow, like a little hot, hot pad or something like that, maybe you don't want to, you know, do down the side. But you can always just crisscross or something. Do do something different. Use some use some funky threads. So it is pretty much of the same thing, going back and forth, back and forth, weaving over under. My beautiful scissors from So Yeah Brothers. And then we're just going to say this one is it's over and then under, over, under, same. And then just keep going. Try and weave close to where you're finishing because for one, you, you're just lifting up that uh, piece of fabric just, you know, a little bit. And you're really close to where you need to scoot it, scoot it up to. If you kind of start weaving down here, then you got to move it all the way up. And so that's, that's work, right? Think, think smart and not hard. And then scoot that up. Make sure it's snug. You're gonna have to do this like every couple rows to make sure you're everybody's together. But I would definitely be pinning on every one because when you go to move it to the machine, the last thing you want is to have this side stay together as you move it under the machine, and this all side just comes straight off. Not fun. <laughs> Not fun at all. All right, I'm gonna put another one here. And another one here. And if you find that you're getting too jammed up, just kind of do a little shimmy and make sure they're not stacking up on each other. You're trying to get the the width of the what the fabric of piece that you have that you're weaving with is is what's there. Nothing nothing more, nothing less, right? To keep it a nice weave, nice tight weave. 
if you had some uh, rope and stuff like that, you could do the same thing with an excess of, of rope. Make maybe a couple outdoor carpets, one for outside the house and, you know, maybe for a patio set or something like that. and then cut and then I was getting three rows with my strip of uh, 84 uh, inch fabric or, or pieces here okay so that was being very economical there I thought that was kind of nice so if I laid 30 long ones here of 84 and then I was using it one piece was getting me three spaces which is almost three inches that's pretty good About average that your piece should be about one inches, like you know, depending on how you, how accurate you are on the folding and stuff like that. Three quarters to an inch. Okay, there we go, and then scoot it on up. Kind of make sure things are laying straight. And you can always use the lines on your ruler to make sure things, you know, your rows are straight. You're looking straight. You've got no, no weeble wobbles going on. All right, so I've done a few. Let's get it under the machine, and we'll sew a little bit, and then we will get a bunch more of my rows done, because I have, have about till there to go. I'm thinking maybe about there. So I've got a bit. I've got a bit. But uh, let's get those other bits sewn down first, okay, so I can show you. Lift your uh, foot, no matter what, because that's a lot of thickness trying to get up and under your machine, okay? So... Get, get, your, get your project close. Try and grab it as a unit. Okay. Oh, she's she looking good. She looking good. Okay. And then lift your foot to try and then position because you want as much space in between this because you don't want your walking foot, your little feeties at the back or the front to get caught up underneath the, the woven parts here. So just kind of wiggle her into shape or into space, in the place. Blah. Okay. And sometimes it's going to be heavy. That, make sure you, the whole front part of your desk is clear or your sewing space as much as you can, uh, depending on how big you want to make this. You can make a couple of small ones for, the, for a big space, you know, if that's easier for you to handle. Space-wise, not everybody's going to have, um, you know, a big desk. And then just sew. Be careful not to sew through your pins. Okay. I know my hands are probably in the way, but yeah, just make sure that's laying straight too. There's your pin. And be 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 be, um, be careful. Be cautious. You don't want to hurt yourself, and you don't want to hurt your machine. And that's why I just do a few at a time. Do a little back stitch to hold that there. And then I found it, because this is so long, I'm just scooting it this way instead of trying to flip it. So let me just readjust my tails here. I feel like I'm a half, half grown squid. <laughs> okay, and then scooting it over to here. I know you guys can't see. I'm going to sew on the last row, too. Okay. Okay, I'll flatten that out a bit. Okay. There. And then just little sections like that, you're going to build yourself an awesome little fabric woven rug. And having the pins in there too, especially on that last row, it would probably slip right out as you're trying to move your, your stuff around. So 
it's good to have it in its position. You can always scoot the fabrics back up. Okay. So. Trying to get it out from under it without hooking anything. Okay. There we go. Okay. Now that's a good a good start on this for sure. Let's see let's see how big she is. So far. Let's see what we got. Uh, so that's thirty four. Four to here. Okay. Did you keep that? Maybe four. Three, four, and fifteen. So fifty? Fifty inches? That's not bad. Needs to be a little bit longer for the space though. A little bit longer. But we're getting there and it looks really pretty. It looks really I like the way the colors are um, coming together between the, the tan, the green, and the red. Uh, you probably, because of the stripe that's in it, you could have planned it a little bit more so it did something, uh, a pattern or something like that, but I like the kind of the randomness of it. So. Well, here's hoping that you take on a woven project with stuff that you have that you need to use up, whether it's pleather, don't do leather. <laughs> well, you could. Um, just something that you maybe have been having, don't know, quite know what to do with. Maybe this gives you an idea to do something with it. All right. Take care, everybody. Enjoy the weekend, and we'll see you Saturday at 1 p.m. for our live stream. Take care, everybody. We'll see you soon.